What I want to do today is I want to show you another way to do it if you don't have a joiner. So let me show you an easy way, an inexpensive way, to make these surfaces so that they'll join together the way that you want them to. And he ended up getting stationed over in Germany for a while. And uh, anyway, he ended up with a brain aneurysm and he almost died and he was in the hospital for a long, long time. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Nominations have closed for these two guitars, but still taking nominations on this semi-hollow X Horizon guitar that I'm building. I'm giving them away and this is your guitar no way and i'm hoping that it will just be an affirmation for you that you're on the right path so man i don't know what to say i told tony i would be honored to build them a guitar. Yeah, it's just a joy to do, and I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it too. Come along for the ride, and let's bring Tony some joy. I am now gonna take you from the very beginning of a guitar build all the way through to the finished guitar. And this one, we're gonna give away to an Army vet. I picked this out a few months back. Uh, maybe you remember this. Okay, so what I've got here in the car is some really incredible leopard wood. That was irresistible. The figuring on this is unbelievable. I've done another guitar in the leopard wood with a red stain, and oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. And then the curly, look at how curly that maple is. Woo, that's gonna be nice. So now I'm going to put these two pieces of wood together. The reason why I bought this wood in the first place was I really wanted this piece. This was one long board and I want this piece because I'm going to fillet it. I am going to book match it. So I'm going to cut it down the middle and have this book match because I really want that piece of wood like that to be book matched. But I've got the rest of this wood. And so taking you all the way through a guitar build from the beginning, picked out the wood, now we're gonna join these two together to start our blank. But one of the things that you'll notice, if you're a beginner, you'll see that the wood doesn't always line up exactly like it needs to. There's gaps and you don't want those gaps. So you've gotta figure out a way to fix that. You can see here that it's kind of tight, but there's still a little bit of a gap there. But as we get up to this area here, you can see there is a big gap in there. And we don't want any gap. So we need to make these both sides of these so that this edge and this edge are flat and completely straight. So one way of doing that is to use a joiner, which I've got a joiner. And uh, that's really slick to be able to use the joiner and just run the boards through and it cuts them so that they are uh, so that they're a nice straight flat surface for putting together. Um, you can use a hand planer. What I want to do today is I want to show you another way to do it if you don't have a joiner and if you just have limited tools uh, how you can do this. So let me show you an easy way, an inexpensive way, to make these surfaces so that they'll join together the way that you want them to. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I just went to the hardware store and I picked up some of this one inch square tube steel. Uh, a couple of steel bars. They were $15. So the first thing is make sure you know which edge you're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing this edge on this one. So what I will do is I'm taking two popsicle sticks, popsicle stick, taking one of these pieces of bar, and what that's doing is it's raising it up off the table a little bit. I'm gonna tip this piece right into it, and then I'm gonna take this piece with two more popsicle sticks, and put those popsicle sticks right there. I'm going to set this other piece of tubing 
right next to it. And now I am going to clamp them on both sides. The popsicle sticks raise up the metal and it leaves just a thin area of the wood that's going to be exposed on the top. This is how I did it before I got the joiner. So you can see there's just a little ridge right there all the way across. And I've got these tightened up. Looks to me like I'm going to be just fine with this. So I'm going to add another clamp right here in the middle. And when it comes time, I can just scooch this over after I get both of these sides done. Now if you look along here, you can see a little ridge all the way down. And then I've got my other clamp. I'll move that when I come time. And then ridge all the way down this way and on both sides. So now it's as simple as using 80 grit sandpaper in my orbital sander. The metal is much harder than what the wood is, so I won't sand away the sand away the metal near as quick as I would sand away the wood. And I'll have myself a flat, even surface. <laughs> You'll kind of be able to see about when you're done, but then what you want to do is just use a nice simple square and you can check it. And you run this down all the way and see if there's any high spots. We look good with that one, so now I'm just going to repeat the process. This took me maybe 10 minutes to sand with uh, a normal sander with 80 grit sandpaper on it. And it doesn't take very long. Might take just a little bit longer than a joiner, but it's a quick, easy way to do this if you don't have a joiner. Take notice that as I do this, I keep the, the wood centered on my orbital sander and I'm not tipping my sander in because then I could dig in to the wood. I don't want to tip it up and have that round part digging in. I just keep it flat, keep it centered, back and forth. Simple as that. Okay, I've done both sides now. I've got my arrows here marking where, which side was which for sure. So this is the side I did. Let's put them together and see how they come together. Look at that! Yep, that's gonna, that, it's good. I mean, of course you can see a little bit of a line there, but that's just because you have two different pieces of wood and I got some of the dark from the metal on there, but that's, that is a tight, tight joint there. So I'll move it where I want to. I'll tape, you know, back and forth to see exactly how I want it to line up. I'll glue those edges and then I'm gonna clamp and I will just clamp the heck out of these. <laughs> I'll have clamps all the way down. Um, I'll put down a little wax paper first, and then I will glue, put, I'll spread glue on both sides, bring them together, and then we'll clamp them up. That is step one. Well, step two after we picked out the wood. Step two of a guitar build. This one for Army Vet. Tony, if you're watching, this is your guitar. In the beginning, hopefully you'll like it when it's all done. This isn't always necessary, but when I can, one of the things that I do like to do is to also clamp it down to the flat surface. Um, it's just a little bit of that, wax paper again, and just to make sure that it's not coming up. Let's see.
this has just been one of the best tools. I'm so glad that I got it for Christmas from my in-laws and my wife. They went in together and bought me the spindle sander. Uh, if you're going to invest in something, this is a great thing to invest in, to do woodworking. It saves me so much time. It's fantastic. That spindle sander has saved me hours and hours of hand sanding, which is fantastic. Now I'll be able to just start rounding these corners off and shaping this. I'll be able to do some of it with the orbital sander and then I'll have to just hand sand it. Again, I know there are guys that don't like the idea of me gluing and screwing this, but this is the way that I can get a really solid joint without having the bulkiness of a set neck and without having the bulkiness of a screw-in neck. I combine the two, put screws and glue, and I can get by with less wood in this area to make this heel really comfortable. Um, so, you know, guitars pretty much started off with a set neck and then it was the, the bolt on neck that was, uh, that was the one that came in and changed everything and said, let's do it, let's do it easier. And Fender started doing the bolt on neck, uh, whereas like the old Gibsons and well, still Gibson, but when it started coming about doing it like the old acoustic guitars where you had a mortise and tenon and gluing them in, that takes a lot of wood real estate in order to have enough wood to make the glue secure that it's going to hold and not break. And even then I've seen plenty of set necks that have broken in this joint. And so I want to do what I can to avoid that. And so thus doing this neck this way, man, I can get that. That is already so sleek and I haven't even started with the hand sanding yet. Right here is the center line. You can see how nice and tight that line is now. We got a really good bind between those two pieces of wood. That looks really good. Let's also do the water trick and just dampen so you can kind of see what the grain will look like. This is leopard wood. You can see once the polyurethane or varnish or whatever you put on there. That's kind of how it would pop. There are a few ways to make sure that this is level. You want this to be flat. You don't want dips and bumps on your wood. Um, I've got a friend who's got a big wide um, table sander that sands things flat. You can use a planer if you've got a planer this wide. I do not have a planer this wide. This is, I think this is about 15 and a half inches wide. Um, so it's, it's too wide to put through a, a planer to make sure that it's flat. Um, you can get a, or you can make a box with your router that you just bring the router back and forth all the way up and down and it'll flatten it out. You can do that. Um, or if you're willing to spend the time, again, just using the sander. And sometimes I, sometimes I take it out to a friend's place and have it planed or sanded. But I thought for this one, I would just do this using my orbital sander once again, just trying to keep this as simple as possible. I use the bar and I can run down and I can see if there's any, any place on here that is, that's got a high spot or a low spot. Like right here, it's, let's see. Yeah, there it's solid. Here, I've got just a little bit of a hump in the middle here so I can take that out yet yeah, by just sanding and making sure that I'm 
taking full swaths and not staying in one spot too much, but it'll I can I can level it out that way. So also guys, I just want to thank my patrons for helping out. And if you would like to help out, especially with this uh, project in particular, then uh, check out my patron page, see how you can jump in for just a small amount. Uh, you can help out, and if I get a lot of people helping, then I'm going to be able to keep doing this and just bring in joy, one person at a time, uh, try and bring a little bit more joy in this world. Fight for joy, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye.